Hello learners, welcome to environmental science course for senior secondary level of NIOS. We have already talked about how economic development has been done at the cost of environmental degradation and find out the ways how can we meet goal of sustainable development. We must save our resources for future generation but its judicious use. This includes protection of air, water, soil and human wealth while producing bumper crops should be our prime concern. So, agriculture is the major occupation in India. Approximately 75 percent of the Indian population are connected with agriculture and its related activities. Hence, it has a major contribution to the economy of nation. For increasing the economy, modern techniques are introduced by using new farming equipments and technology. We will discuss about green revolution, introduction of high yielding varieties, need and significance of the pesticides and fertilizers, need of superior quality seeds, agricultural implements and irrigation, modern agricultural practices such as animal husbandry, poultry farming, fisheries, etc. Also discuss about the livestock management and consequences of aquaculture during this program. This is lesson 20, modern agriculture from module 6, sustainable development of environmental science senior secondary course. I am Nilam Gupta, your course coordinator. Welcome you in this program. So, the objective of this program are define green revolution, introduction of high yielding varieties, significance of the need for, for pesticides and fertilizers, emphasize the need for superior quality seed and agricultural implements and irrigation, learn about the modern agricultural practices, discuss animal husbandry and livestock management, discuss detrimental effects of indiscriminate use of hormones on animals and poultry, describe the consequences of aquaculture. More than 90 percent of farmers work today using the most innovative tech practices and growing techniques to produce enough food, fuel for uh, fiber for the growing world while minimizing the, their environmental footprint at the same time. The term modern agriculture depicts their, their commitment to innovation stewardship and meeting the global food challenges at all once. All at once, there is nothing conventional about that. Modern agriculture includes agribusiness, intensive farming industri or industrial farming. Now come to green revolution. Green re revolution means a large increase in food production in developed and developing countries achieved by using modern agricultural techniques. M. S. Swaminathan Indian geneticist and international administrator renowned for his leading role in India's Green Revolution, a program under which high yield varieties of wheat and rice seedlings were planted in the field of poor farmers. Swaminathan is known as Indian father of Green Revolution for his leadership and success in introducing and further developing high yielding varieties of wheat and Indi wheat in India. Norman Ernest Burlock was an American biologist, humanitarian and Nobel laureates who has been called the father of the Green Revolution, agriculture's greatest spokesperson and the man who saved a billion life. Now we will talk about benefits and results of Green Revolution. The Green Revolution and the introduction of chemical fertilizers, synthetic bios, herbicides and pesticides, high yielding crops and the method of multiple cropping, the agriculture industry was able to produce much larger quantities of food. It was made possible to grow more crops on roughly the same amount of land with a similar amount of effort. This reduced production cost and also resulted in cheaper prices for food in the market. The ability to grow more food on the same amount of land, land was also beneficial to the environment because it meant that less forest or natural land needed to be converted to farmland to produce more food. The natural land is that is currently not needed for agricultural land is safe for the time being and can be utilized by animals and plants for their natural habitat. Now come to the result of the Green Revolution. The initiative led by Norman Barlock, the father of the Green Revolution, who received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970, credited with saving over a billion people from starvation, involved the Development of high yielding varieties of cereal grains, expansion of irrigation in infrastructure, modernization of management techniques, distribution of hybridized seeds, synthetic fertilizers and pesticides to farmer. That means green, for, green revolution is research plus development plus technology. 
that transfer results of green revolution. Now come to the high yielding varieties. High yielding variety seeds are undoubtedly land substituting, water economizing, more labor using and develop employment generating innovation. Nevertheless, they are very delicate and sensitive and therefore require a great deal of care if a successful harvest is to be obtained. Maize, pulses and ground nuts. Wheat varieties such as 260 HYVs, disease resistance, wheat UP310, high yielding variety, durum wheat instant food and having high export value, several rice varieties as 600 HYV, Pro Agro 6201, Sehadri and fine grained hybrid Pusa RD10 are released for cultivation, maize variety 130 HYV. Vivek 9, Pigeon Pea as Pusa Agata, Pusa, Pusa 84, Chickpea K850 and Urbean 430, PSI Moon Bean like PS16, T44 and HYV of oil as early hybrid Makka 3, 430 HYV, HYV of the oil seeds like groundnut, MH2, Kaushal, Mustard variety, Pusa Bolt and Pusa Agrini. Soya bean varieties, Pusa 24 and Durga, and sunflower variety, Modern and Arun. Now we will discuss organic fertilizers, pesticides, and fertilizers. Farmers use, farmers use both organic fertilizers produced from plant and animals waste as well as commercial chemical fertilizers produced from various inorganic compounds. Fertilizer is any material of natural or synthetic origin that is applied to soil or to plant tissues to supply one or more plant nutrients essential to the growth of plant. Organic fertilizer or manure are fertilizers derived from animal matter, human excreta or vegetable matter. Naturally occurring organic fertilizer include animal waste from meat processing, peat, manure, slurry and guano. As figure shows fertilizer, organic fertilizers and pesticides include nitrogen fertilizers which are essential for leaf growth, potassium is essential for strong stem growth, movement of water in plants, promotion of flowering and fruiting, phosphorus is essential for development of roots, fruit, flowers, fruits and seeds. Figure show organic fertilizer in the next slide. Organic fertilizer are carbon based compound that increase the productivity and grow, quality growth quality of plant. They have various benefits over chemical fertilizers which include first non-toxic food. Use of these organic fertilizer ensures that the food items produced are free of harmful chemicals. As a result, the end consumer who eat these organic products are less prone to diseases such as cancer, strokes and skin disorders. On farm production, the majority of organic fertilizers can be prepared locally or on the farm itself, hence the cost of these fertilizers is much lower. Next is low capital investment. Organic fertilizers help in maintaining the soil structure and increasing its nutrient holding capacity. Therefore, a farmer who has practiced organic farming for many years will require far less fertilizer because his soil is already rich in essential nutrients. Next, fertility of soil. Organic fertilizers ensure that the farm remain farms remain fertile for hundreds of years, land located at the site of ancient civilizations such as India and China are still fertile even though agriculture has been practiced there for thousands of years. The fertility is maintained because organic fertilizers or were always used in the past and further increase their use of chemical fertilizers or even leave the farming industry entirely. Next is safe environment. Organic fertilizers are easily biodegradable and do not cause environmental pollution. We will discuss pesticides and its benefit. Pesticides are substance means for attracting, seducing and then destroying any paste. The most common use of pesticides is as plant protection products which is which in general protects plants from damaging influences such as weeds, fungi or insects. Now come to the benefits of pesticides. It includes increased food production, increased profit for farmers and the prevention of diseases. Although pests consume or harm a large portion of agriculture crop, 
without the use of pesticides, it is likely that they would consume a higher percentage. Pesticides are also increased farm profits by helping the farmers save money on labor costs. Using pesticides reduces the amount of time re required to manually remove weeds and pests from fields. In addition to saving crops and livestock, pesticides have also had direct benefits to human health. It is estimated that since 1945, the use of pesticides has prevented the death of around 7 million people by killing pests that carry or transmit diseases. Examples are malaria, bubonic plague, and typhus. Next is seed quality. It describes the potential performance of a seed lot. Trueness to variety, the presence of inert matter, seed of other crops, or wheat seed. Germination percentage, vigor, appearance, and freedom from disease are important aspects of seed quality. Highest quality seed should meet minimum standards for each of these characteristics. The standards of official certification agencies are usually accepted as the minimum requirement high quality seed. Now come to the need for use of superior quality seeds. As shown in the flowchart, superior quality of seeds have some of the characteristics that is high yielding varieties, high, higher nutritional quality in pulses, baking quality in wheat, preserving quality in fruits and vegetables, oil quality and quantity in oil producing plants, varieties for disease and pest resistance, varieties for resistance against heat, cold and water logging. Now come to mechanization of agriculture. Mechanization of agriculture includes plow, land lever, box drills, power operated tractors spray, thresher, mechanical pricker, water pumps, combined harvester, etc. as used in agriculture as a equipment. Agriculture mechanization help in increasing production, productivity and profitability in agriculture by achieving timelines in farm operations, bringing precision in, meet, meeting, in metering and placement of inputs, reducing available inputs losses, increasing utilization efficiency of costly inputs, that is seed, chemical, fertilizer, irrigation, water, etc., reducing unit cost of produce, enhancing profitability and competitiveness in the cost of operation. It also helps in the conservation of the produce and byproducts from qualitative and quantitative damages, enables value addition and establishment of agro-processing enterprises for additional income and employment generation from farm produce. It is one of the important input to usher in all around development in the rural India. Now come to the agriculture mechanization issues and challenges. Significant challenges will have to be overcome to achieve the level of agricultural productivity necessary to meet the predicted world demand for food, fiber and fuel in 2050. Although agriculture has met significant challenges in the past, targeted increases in Productivity by 2050 will have to be made in the face of stringent constraint, including limited resources, less skilled labor, and a limited amount of arable land, among others. Few points also added to agriculture mechanization issue that is, mechanization policy and strategies formulation, national network of agriculture mechanization, machinery testing, lab accreditation, drying and storage. Livestock mechanization, example, only poultry sector has adopted few innovative technologies. Lots of work in the livestock sector is needed. Mechanized sugarcane planting and harvesting, mechanization of pulse crops. New agriculture practices include animal husbandry, poultry farming, apiculture, fisheries, and mushroom culture. We will take one by one. First, we will take poultry farming is the raising of domesticated birds such as chickens, duck, turkey and geese for the purpose of farming meat or eggs for food. Poultry are farmed in greater number with chickens being the most numerous. More than 50 billion chickens are raised annually as a source of food, both their meat and their eggs. Mushroom culture is the process of producing food, medicine, and other products by the cultivation of mushroom and other fungi. Fish farming or PC culture involves raising fish commercially in tanks or enclosures, usually for food. It is the principal form of aquaculture, 
Worldwide, the most important fish species used in fish farming are carp, tilapia, salmon, and carp catfish. There is an increasing demand for fish and fish protein, which has resulted in widespread overfishing in wild fisheries. Next is apiculture or beekeeping is the maintenance of honeybee colonies commonly in the hives by humans. A beekeeper keeps bees in order to collect their honey and other products that the hive produces including bee wax, propyl, propolis, pollen and royal jelly. A location where bees are kept is called an apiary or bee yard. Next is animal husbandry is the management and care of farm animals by humans in which genetic qualities and behavior considered to be advantageous to humans are further developed. The term can refer to the practice of selectively breeding and raising livestock to promote desirable traits in animals for utility, sports, pleasure or research. Now come to the management of livestock. Livestock are domesticated animals raised in an agriculture uh, seat, uh, setting to produce commodities such as food, fiber and labor. Livestock is defined as being useful animal which implies a commercial purpose or being reared for financial gain. Milk producing animals are called milch animals. The two most popular milch animals are cows and buffaloes. Some indigenous or Indian breeds of dairy cows are Sahiva, Red Sindhi, Tharparkar, Gir. Some exotic or foreign breeds of cows are Jersey, Brown Swiss, Holstein, Frisian. Some cross breeds of dairy cows are Friswal, Curran Fries and Curran Swiss. High milk yielding breeds of buffaloes are Murra, Surti, Mesana. Feeding and nutrition. What animals eat has a major impact on performance, profitability and quality of the end product for intensive livestock. That is pigs, poultry and sheep and cattle and feed. <coughs> Feedlots, cereals, legumes and proteins may make up the majority of the diet and are formulated to meet diet specifications. Fetal of cattle should be rich in carbohydrate, protein, fats, minerals, vitamins and water. It must include large amount of roughage and some concentrates. Roughage, the low nutrient fibrous coarse material rich in cellulose. Concentrates are generally rich in one or more nutrients provided by cotton seed, oil cakes, gram, cereal and millets. Genetics and selection. Genetic improvement is a major factor contributing to the profitability of production system for livestock and poultry. Breeding and selection have resulted in significant economic gains in beef, lamb, wool, milk, pork, egg and chicken production. Next section is shelter management. The provision of shelter allows cattle to better cope with the varying climate extremes that can occur throughout the year and can increase their productivity. Health cattle can tolerate a wide range of temperatures if they are acclimatized and have adequate feed and water. However, shelter can improve the welfare of the animals and reduce production losses. Animals without shelter need to put more energy into normal functioning and less into production. Now we will discuss about various diseases such as fungal, bacterial, viral diseases, certain cattle and or livestock. Some diseases can have devastating effects on the livelihoods of everyone in the supply chain. To ensure the impact on the economy and community are minimized, the Department of Agriculture and Food, Western Australia maintains trained response ready staff and system to ensure, the, ensure an emergency animal disease incident in promptly and efficiently controlled in controlled in addition the risk of introduction of exotic disease is also managed by ensuring stock feed contains appropriate ingredients these are few diseases which are uh, affected to livestock that is uh, disease uh, called BSR, brsv bbd hemophilus somonas IBR, P3, Hemolytica and Pasturella, Maltocursida, and Rabies and Bovine Respiratory Diseases Complex. Here is a table which uh, contain few diseases such as foot and mouth disease, pox, dermatitis, tuberculosis, render paste, anthrax, salmonellosis, mistis. 
they have, we have given causal organisms such as virus, bacteria, and the animal which are affected that mostly are cattle. And symptoms you can see in the table which has displayed in the display. Now come to the disposal of livestock. Dead animal disposal, disposal of dead animals and other waste in the, in the safe, timely and legal manner com that is composting, rendering, burial, incinerate and cremation. Burial must be no less, burial must be no less than 6 feet deep, deep with a minimum of 30 inches of soil cover. Burial cannot be in a wetland, floodplain or shoreline. Composting as an underlying layer or substrate use a mixture of hay, manure and bedding with most moisture contained between 40 to 50 percent. Order can be kept to a minimum as long as the pile is on to aerate it and the covering material has enough carbon sources such as straw, sawdust or hay to provide a 25 to 1 ratio of carbon to nitrogen. Now come to the detrimental effect of hormones on livestock and poultry. Animal population, animal in the population that have been selected for high production efficiency seem to be more, or more at risk for behavioral, physiological and immunological problems and with respect to metabolic reproduction and health traits in broiler, pigs and daily cattles. Hormones and antibiotics can increase weight gain or counter the effect of other treatments. Dairy cow given RBGH for example, sometimes develop other infection. Changes in body conformation as the, such as feminization and raised tail heads were described as early in 1958. According to the environmental working group, 87% of tested meat samples by at least one species of antibiotic resistant bacteria doesn't exactly make you hungry. Beyond hormones and antibiotics, other drugs are given to animals to enhance growth rate and meat quality. The drug rectopamine is fed to pigs, turkeys and cattle to make them produce larger quantities of leaner meat with less fat. Rectopamine is not approved for human use, but because it's added to feed in the weeks immediately prior to slaughter, traces of the drug remain in meat and meat from treated animal. Now we will discuss about consequences of aquaculture. Aquaculture is the practice of growing aquatic species in pens or nets. Most aqu aquaculture includes the use of ponds, holding tanks or nets at, that, flown, that float in open water. Species are grown in, the, in these controlled environment and harvested for sale. Aquaculture is also known as fish farming. This technique is actually used to grow over 220 species, different species of freshwater and marine organisms, while around half of aquaculture facilities are dedicated to growing fish, other grows and harvest pollus such as clams and mussels, crustaceans such as crabs and shrimp and aquatic plants. Aquaculture was established mainly to help reduce the pressure on natural fish population. Now per, uh, come to the purpose of aquaculture, utilization of natural resources to increase production for per capita consumption and income, ornamental purpose, sports and game purpose, upliftment of socio-economic status of people, create employment opportunities, utilization by, of byproducts like fish, liver, oil, fish protein, concentrate, etc. Now come to the environmental effect, effects of fish farming. One large problem with aquaculture is that organisms are grown in large number of large numbers in small areas. This concentrated setting can cause some major problems that influence the environment. This setting result in a large amount of uneaten food and bodily waste being released into the environment. This unusual increase in nutrients often result in the certain in the repeat in the this unnatural increase in nutrient often result in the creation of algal bloom, which can negatively impact native species by reducing the amount of oxygen available in the water. The concentrated setting of aquaculture also increases the risk of diseases. Organisms raised in aquaculture setting are given antibiotics to combat free, combat these diseases. As a result of aquaculture, there is increased risk of spreading diseases to natural population and increased risk of pollution from medication used to combat diseases.
Learners, this is all about uh, lesson 20, modern agriculture. Before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points, that is what you have learned. Green revolution is substantial increase in yield of crop using high yielding varieties of seeds and providing enough fertilizers and pesticides and good irrigation. Professor Norman Borlaug helped India in bringing in green re revolution. Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, internationally renowned Indian agricultural scientist and the father of Green Revolution in India made India a food surplus country. Indiscriminate and wasteful use of fertilizer causes environmental pollution and cost us money. Modern agriculture is an industry, hence it is highly mechanized. Various types of machines are used for managing crops in large assays of land. Poultry farming, apiculture, mushroom culture and fisheries are newer agricultural practices which brings money and employment to the farmer. Animal husbandry is a branch of agriculture which deals with proper care and breeding of domesticated animal. Feed of cattle should be rich in carbohydrate, protein, fat, minerals, vitamins and roughage. The low nutrients, rafirus, coarse material rich in cellulose. It is very important to provide proper shelter to the domestic animals to keep them in a healthy condition so that the milk yield is high. Animals are also attacked by disease causing organisms like bacteria, viruses and fungi. Common diseases of cattle are foot and mouth disease, anthrax, rinderpest and cowpox and tuberculosis. Proper disposal of death in dead livestock is a serious matter. Indiscriminate use of hormone for increasing milk production cause lot of discomfort and pain to the animals. Aquaculture is a sustainable way of harvesting aquatic edible crustaceans. It helps to save the oceans or marine ecosystem from getting damaged. So, dear learners, this is all about lesson 20, modern agriculture. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.